Thank you very much for this kind invitation to present at this wonderful meeting which I attended uh, two years ago and had a fantastic uh, visit to Seoul and made many uh, new friends. Uh, I wish I could be there in person, but obviously the pandemic uh, prevents uh, our travel internationally. So I look forward to getting back uh, in the uh, near uh, future. These are my disclosures relevant to this talk is my work with QBD Therapeutics, which makes an FGFR3 inhibitor, which I'll be discussing and consulting and my role as principal investigator on the Olympus trial, which is sponsored by Eurogen. For this talk, I'll cover the role of adjuvant therapy for high-risk upper tract urothelial cancer and specifically the results of the PALT uh, trial, which was conducted in the UK. And I'll speak briefly about a FGFR3 targeted therapy trial for adjuvant therapy and then pivot to uh, some new work and interesting work in neoadjuvant chemotherapy and then I'll finish by a discussion of the unmet need for low-grade upper tract urothelial cancer and specifically the results of the Olympus trial. So the rationale for adjuvant therapy in upper tract urothelial carcinoma is based upon the perceived risk of progression in patients following definitive surgery with either nephro-ureterectomy or distal ureterectomy for high-grade invasive cancer, and it's based in the perceived benefit in high-risk bladder cancer, where though the level of evidence isn't high, uh, there are similar risks of progression uh, post-definitive radical cystectomy. We're all aware of the, of the difficulty in accuracy of clinical staging of the upper urinary tract uh, cancers. And so post-nephrectomy or ureterectomy, we have accurate pathologic staging, and we can use that to base uh, the uh, decision-making regarding uh, additional systemic uh, therapy. And as you know, there's no high-level evidence supporting either neoadjuvant or adjuvant therapy. And the current EUA guidelines, EAU guidelines, sorry, still uh, indicate uh, nephro-ureterectomy followed by surveillance and then, of course, treatment at the presentation of metastatic disease. Uh, for retrospective studies to date uh, in almost 200 patients, cisplatin-based uh, therapy have a very wide range of a five-year overall survival uh, benefit in patients with N0 uh, disease. And so um, this is just the Kaplan-Meier plot from one of the largest uh, study uh, showing uh, no difference in overall survival and no difference in uh, cancer-specific uh, survival, and hence the need for uh, clinical trials. There have been two large series published in the last uh, few years. Uh, the one on the left is from Andrea Necki, uh, uh, in the British uh, Journal, uh, which was uh, a consortium of 15 centers over a 15-year period, uh, patients with invasive cancer and negative nodes or NET stage um, with positive nodes and all had a prior nephro uh, that showed uh, no benefit to adjuvant uh, uh, chemotherapy. And then in this study published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, a large study from the National Cancer database, again, a high-risk patient population with um, PT3 or PT4 disease or NET stage in node positive disease. And you can see in both of the Kaplan-Meier plots a small but statistically significant benefit to adjuvant uh, chemotherapy. So uh, hence the need for clinical trials. And uh, as you're all aware, the PALT trial was just recently uh, reported in Lancet. Alison Bertel and colleagues from the UK. This was a phase three open-labeled randomized uh, clinical trial. Uh, the patient population all had a prior uh, radical nephro-ureterectomy for invasive pathologically proven disease uh, um, and uh, the node status uh, could be both positive or negative or as you'll see in many patients there were, there were a node dissection was not uh, performed. Uh, predominant urothelial carcinoma and eligible for chemotherapy to be received within 90 days. A total of 261 patients were randomized. The intent to treat population is 260. 131 of those received chemotherapy. And of the patients completing uh, chemotherapy, uh, a smaller portion of GEM uh, cisplatin and uh, GEM uh, carbo uh, received all four uh, cycles. Um, in this uh, table, what's striking to me 
is that a, a high percentage of patients uh, did not have any lymph nodes in the surgical specimen. So this may be perceived as a limitation of this particular uh, study. Uh, but nonetheless, um, as you can see in the table on the right, uh, a high percentage of patients with PT3 or PT4 uh, disease uh, constituting a very high risk patient population. Um, and uh, because of the challenges with uh, renal function post-nephrectomy, uh, substantial number of patients were not cisplatin eligible, and those patients went on to get uh, gemcitabine carboplatin. As you can see on the two curves on the left, there was a statistically significant benefit in both disease-free survival, which was the primary endpoint, and metastasis-free survival, uh, the first clinical trial to really show uh, this uh, magnitude of uh, benefit. And you can see in the subset analysis that um, the uh, patients who were treated with gemcitabine cisplatin uh, uh, received most of the benefit, uh, whereas the gem carbo patients overlapped with one, uh, meaning a non-significant difference. Patients who had positive margins did not appear to benefit as much, and patients with locally advanced disease, T3 or T4, uh, appeared to benefit uh, more than those patients with organ confined. However, one has to interpret the overall study as positive, independent of whether the patients re received gem cis or gem carbo, and independent of the final pathologic uh, tumors. While this has not made it into either the EAU or ICUD uh, guidelines, uh, it is in the French guidelines, however, uh, I do consider this uh, level one evidence supporting a new standard of care and a discussion needs to take place with every patient regarding the perceived uh, potential benefit of adjuvant uh, chemotherapy uh, for this uh, high-risk patient population. So as I mentioned at the beginning, QED Therapeutics has an FGFR uh, selective uh, kinase inhibitor that they're now uh, testing <clears throat> in a large phase three adjuvant trial. Uh, the activity is based upon a smaller study that they did in metastatic uh, disease in patients who'd failed prior therapy with the primary endpoint of objective response. Um, in some of these patients, however, they were uh, treated as first line uh, in the green and second line in the red. And as you can see, uh, in this difficult to treat patient population, a perceived uh, benefit to overall or survival in those studies are ongoing. Uh, but they've now moved into the adjuvant uh, space with the PROOF 302. Uh, a study design. So these are patients with high-risk disease post-surgery. Uh, Everybody gets tested for FGFR uh, mutations, and then there's a randomization in those patients who are positive uh, to uh, infagritinib uh, versus placebo with a primary outcome measure of disease-free uh, survival. And this study is ongoing, and I do sit on the scientific steering committee, and we'll also be opening this at our place at Baylor. Now, shifting to neoadjuvant therapy, uh, the obvious rationale is um, to treat patients with both kidneys in place with optimized renal function where uh, the potential to give cisplatin-based chemotherapy is optimized. Um, as you know, there's a limited amount of data. This was a systemic, systematic review and meta-analysis of both adjuvant and neoadjuvant chemotherapy for upper tract disease, and these two studies were in the neoadjuvant space suggesting a benefit to, to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Um, a study uh, reported from uh, Hopkins uh, 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 compared 32 patients treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy and 240 that did not. Uh, the pathologic complete response was 9.4%, uh, very similar to what was reported in the uh, MD Anderson uh, trial. And uh, what the bar plot uh, shows is overall lower pathologic stage in patients who are treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So EA 8141 was a phase two trial conducted within the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group and recently reported in the Journal of uh, Urology. This is the study uh, scheme of patients with biopsy proven high grade disease and measurable disease on both ureteroscopy and CT. Uh, either went into RMA if they were platinum eligible or RMB if they were not. Uh, and then followed by nephro uh, A total of 30 patients were treated in RMA with dose dense MVAC. Six patients were treated in RMB with gem carbo, and this uh, arm was closed due to poor accrual. 
the overall uh, pathologic CR rate was 14%, very similar to what's been reported in the retrospective uh, series. And uh, this is the Kaplan-Meier plot uh, showing that uh, patients treated with accelerated or dose-dense MVAC uh, did better than the patients with carboplatin uh, treatment. Um, and uh, uh, a phase three trial obviously be required to show a definitive uh, survival benefit. And this group is now working on a trial combining immunotherapy and chemotherapy with a very similar uh, design. So now we're going to switch to the management of low-grade upper tract urothelial carcinoma on the left side of this uh, diagram. And these patients require uh, a cytology that is uh, negative for high-grade cancer, preferably a biopsy consistent with low-grade uh, disease and relatively small volume disease that could potentially be treated endoscopically, though at a high risk of uh, recurrence. The NCCN uh, guidelines uh, currently for low-grade disease recommend nephroureterectomy um, or endoscopic ablation and possibly uh, the use of um, intracavitary chemotherapy or BCG, particularly for patients that show evidence of um, recurrence or larger volume disease that is um, harder to control and uh, perhaps a patient who's not medically fit for a major operation. So to date, there's no approved therapy for uh, intracavitary uh, therapy. Um, being a rare disease, it's actually hard to do uh, clinical trials in this uh, space. Um, we're all familiar with the role of endoscopic ablation uh, in an attempt to preserve the kidney, which is uh, rational uh, when we've got uh, strong evidence for uh, low-grade disease. Um, Intracavitary therapy is not always the easiest thing to do in the outpatient setting, and so oftentimes uh, urologists will defer to or revert to nephroureterectomy uh, to control either difficult to access uh, tumors or unresectable uh, disease. Um, and so this really represents a strong unmet need uh, for these uh, patients. And if we could achieve a durable, complete response uh, with uh, in this case, uh, UGN-101, uh, then this would provide a new kidney sparing treatment uh, for these uh, patients. So this is the chemistry. This is based upon a reverse thermal uh, gel, uh, which in the top uh, right is a semi-solid at body temperature and a viscous liquid at low temperature that can be injected through a retrograde uh, catheter. In this case, uh, the chemotherapy drug mitomycin is admixed with this gel. So by definition, uh, the gel is going to be retained in the upper urinary tract for four to six hours, resulting in prolonged exposure to mitomycin C and overcoming uh, some of the challenges of intracavitary installation. The uh, drug comes uh, packaged, as you see on the right, uh, with two vials of sterile uh, mitomycin uh, C and a, a vial of sterile hydrogel. The pharmacist mixes this uh, and then keeps it in the icebox uh, at cold uh, temperature. You'll see the injector on the bottom right uh, of the diagram is very similar to a balloon insufflator uh, for, um, say, ureteral dilation or dilation of a percutaneous um, nephroscopy uh, tract. Um, you need a guide wire, and we typically will use a 7 French ureteral catheter, though in the clinical trial we used as small as a 5 French uh, catheter. The Olympus trial is a prospective phase 3 open label single arm trial in patients with biopsy proven low grade upper tract urothelial carcinoma. The primary endpoint was complete response at the primary disease evaluation, which was conducted six weeks after completion of six weekly installations. The key secondary endpoint was durability of response at 12 months and a very careful assessment of safety. 74 patients were screened and enrolled, and 71 patients received at least one installation. This was delivered through a retrograde uh, ureteral uh, catheter, and then six weeks later, primary disease evaluation, which required a net, in order to achieve a complete response, patients had to have visible absence of tumor and a negative cytology, and then patients who had any residual papillary disease had to have a biopsy that was uh, negative. Patients who achieved a complete response could then go into monthly maintenance installations, and ureteroscopy was continued at three-month intervals out to 12 uh, months. As I mentioned, uh, treatment was once weekly for six weeks. Uh, 
uh, instilling this through a retrograde ureteral catheter. Uh, the mitomycin concentration was 4 milligrams per cc of gel. Patients could receive up to 15 cc's of the gel. Uh, prior to treatment, we took three measurements of the volume of the renal pelvis uh, using uh, retrograde uh, pyelography and averaged these. And then uh, patients were given uh, bicarbonate uh, the night before the morning of and 30 minutes prior to therapy, as this has been shown to increase the uptake of mitomycin C in an alkaline environment. Uh, again, we had 74 patients that were pathologically confirmed to have low-grade disease, and the study was powered uh, to detect a complete response rate superior to 15%. Arguably, this was set quite low because of the unmet need in this oftentimes challenging to treat patient uh, population. 71 uh, patients make up the intent to treat study population, uh, an expected mix of gender and average age of patients. The target lesion was 5 to 15 millimeters, uh, but patients could have multiple tumors at baseline with an attempt to ablate uh, the uh, non-target lesion tumors and then Unresectable or unreachable tumors made up about half of the patients, and this would be typically the lower pole of the renal pelvis, which, as we all know, can be difficult to access ureteroscopically. 42 of the 71 uh, patients, or 59%, achieved a complete response in the target lesion. I didn't mention this previously, but the target lesion had to measure between 5 and 15 uh, millimeters in diameter. Partial response, meaning a reduction in the size of the target lesion but not complete ablation occurred in a small percentage of patients and six or nine percent of the patients were subsequently found to have high-grade disease. What's interestingly is the patients who had unresectable disease at baseline had a very similar complete response rate of 59 percent. These are the most common adverse events and ureteric stenosis was seen in 44 percent of the patients urinary tract infections, hematuria, flank pain, sometimes due to ureteral stenosis or ureteral uh, narrowing. Of these patients, uh, 24 uh, required a stent, which was usually on a transient basis. Uh, some patients could be managed with balloon dilation and stenting, um, and two patients underwent a nephroureterectomy due to refractory uh, stenosis. Durability of the response at 12 months was assessed in the 41 patients who achieved a complete uh, response. 25 of those patients reached the 12-month mark, and 20 of those had a response evaluation. 14 or 70 percent maintained the complete response at 12 months, and as you can see, there's a very wide confidence interval because this is still ongoing and not all the patients have reached that 12-month mark. A Kaplan-Meier analysis was pre-specified, and we estimate that 84% of the patients would have a durable complete response at 12 months with a median time to recurrence of 13 months. This is still a work in progress and uh, will be reported at a subsequent meeting and manuscript. So in conclusion, the results of the Olympus trial demonstrate that installation of UGM-101 once weekly for six weeks achieves primary chemoablation in 59% of patients with biopsy-proven low-grade upper tract urothelial carcinoma. The durability of response data that we have to date indicates that uh, many of these complete responses can be maintained with monthly maintenance uh, treatment, and uh, this provides a kidney-sparing alternative for patients with low-grade upper tract urothelial carcinoma. This was recently FDA approved in April, and we're beginning to use this in the clinic successfully. So in summary, the PALT trial represents a new standard of care for adjuvant therapy for patients with high-risk upper tract uh, urothelial cancer post-nephro ureterectomy. The phase two data reported from ECOG uh, support proof of concept for neoadjuvant chemotherapy in this space. Uh, QEDs conducting a uh, adjuvant uh, therapy trial using an oral FGFR3 inhibitor and the recent FDA approval of uh, UGN-101 or now gel mito has now given us a new treatment option for patients with low-grade renal pelvic carcinoma. And just want to put in a plug for our bladder cancer journal. We uh, love to get uh, papers from our Korean uh, colleagues. Thank you again very much. <laughs>